are, we're looking at required practical three. Uh, it's a common exam question anyway, and now they've made it into a practical, so that makes even more sense. So my instructions ask me to label six Boyden tubes with zero to uh, one molar per decimeter cubed of sucrose, which is here, and I've got to make these solutions. So if you watch the other video, you will know that to make um, 20 mils of a 0.2 molar solution, well, if it was 10 mils of a 0.2 molar solution, I would add two mils of sucrose and eight mils of water. I'm making 20 mils, so I need to just double those quantities. So I'm gonna pour my sucrose into uh, this beaker here. And put the lid back on, move it out of the way. I'm gonna use my syringes. I've rinsed these already so they're free of any residue. And obviously this is gonna make it more precise in terms of uh, extracting the liquid as opposed to using a measuring cylinder. And I wanna just take four of that yeah, and I'm going to pop that in there. I've already labelled my uh, boiling tubes there. Then I'm going to use this syringe, and I now need 16 mils of this. So this is my distilled water. Take it up to 10. Pop that in. Add another 6. And there we go. Next one, I want 0 0.5 four moles per decimeter cubed of sucrose. If it was 10 mils, I'd add four mils of one mole of sucrose and six mils of water, but I want 20 mils, so I'm gonna add eight mils of sucrose and 12 mils of water. So here we go. It tells me to use a potato chip cutter, cut six chips from your potato tuber, make sure you remove any peel on the potatoes, use a ruler, scalpel and tile to cut the edges of the chips to the same length. Block the potato chips dry with a paper towel. Okay, so let's have a little look. This one, this is my cork borer and you will always have two. Why? Because when you puncture your potato, your potato is stuck in there and you need to be able to get it out. And so we use a smaller one to push it. Okay, now that's my potato chip. Now using a core borer is much more precise than using a knife and trying to cut it into cubes and measuring the size of the cubes. This is very all standard, all uniform, so that's great. So I need six of those, so I'm gonna go one, Oh, that one didn't work very well. Stayed in there. Right, okay, make sure you don't do that. I've just used the small one to cut it instead of the big one. So now I need to squeeze that out of there. See, so these are all mistakes that you can make. Okay, here's the large one. But you know, this is why we do these experiments, because um, it's a learning curve all the way through for everybody. So there's two. Should have gone all the way through. Three. Should have through. Oh my god, I've just done it again. Four. 
five, Okay, make sure on that one I just cut it and it went into the tube where it had been cut out from the other potato, so make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, make sure you're using your big cutter to make sure that they're all the same size. This is why we do practicals, because there's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so the next thing, cut the potato chips to the same length. I'm just going to line my potato chips up and I'm going to cut them. And then I need to measure the length. I'm gonna measure the length I could just cut them all there, but the whole point of doing an experiment is to make it so that somebody else can come along and repeat it and get exactly the same set of results. So we're gonna measure those three centimeters. Using an opaque ruler is not a good idea. I'm gonna use this um, transparent one. And I can definitely make my um, potato chips three, centimeters long so I'm going to cut there now what I've got is six potatoes and they're all the same length now it asks me to roll the potato chip until it no longer makes the paper towel wet so we can know we've absorbed all the moisture off there. It's happening really easily. Okay, and we'll notice that we've done our figures to three significant figures. Okay, so I'm just going to check the temperature of my water bath, and so I don't have to hold the thermometer, I'm just going to pop it in there for a moment. I'm actually going to put my boiling um, tube with 20 ml of just plain water in there as well. Okay. 
now going to do is pop those in. So this was the one called zero. This was the one. perhaps just leave it and it would be comparable so it would make any difference. It could differ on each potato chip and for that reason we're going to remove it. So we're removing the excess water because the water has a mass and will affect the final mass of the potato and also the amount of water on the outside of the potato may be different. Of course, I now need to work out my percentage change, and to do that, I'm going to do the increase divided by the original, or rather, should I say, the change divided by the original. So, for the first one, I'm looking at a 0.2 increase, 0.2 divided by 2.4, and that will give me um, a number, and I'm going to multiply that by 100 to find the percentage. Okay, so here I've got my results. And you can see that even I've made a mistake because when I went to uh, write down without actually thinking about it, I went to write something like 8.65, but obviously uh, it was 8.655, and so therefore I needed to round it up uh, to ensure that I made it two, three significant figures. Um, the other thing to note is that in actual fact, I didn't really need to record to three significant figures at all in these two columns because um, 
when you, the rule is that you use three significant figures, but you go to the resolution of your apparatus. Now the digital scale that I used only went to a tenth of a gram, and that's the lowest resolution. So what do we mean by resolution? Let's have a little think. Uh, with thermometers, normally the resolution is uh, one degree, but you can have thermometers that go up in half degrees. So the resolution for that type of thermometer would be half a degree. Um, some of our more expensive digital scales go to a um, hundredth or a thousandth of a gram, and so they have a better resolution. So um, in this case, in this actual fact here, I didn't need to have these zeros on there. But that, again, that's the kind of thing that you would write down in your lab book because you're showing that you've moved from one place to another in terms of your learning journey. Okay, the next thing to note is that I've had an increase in my percentage uh, mass change there, no change there, um, and then it starts to, the potato chip got lighter because water moved out of the potato chip. And so it's gone down, it's gone down, Hmm, then we've got a bit of a strange result here, looks like an anomaly, and then it goes down again. So when I plot my graph, I'm not going to include that as part of my data when I decide of my line of best fit. What I'll do is I'll circle it to show it's an anomaly and it's not been included in the result. And this is why if somebody else repeats the experiment and uh, shows it's reproducible, gets the same set of results, then I can use more results, it makes my... Uh, overall mean more reliable and it makes my line of best fit more reliable which means the point at which it crosses the x-axis is also more reliable in fact at this we can see where it would cross the x-axis because we've got that zero in there as well